Now back to tonight and amid the climate emergency and soaring fuel prices, some say the switch to electric vehicles can't come soon enough. But electric cars are expensive. That's why there's only a few thousand on our roads. So if we are going to, if we are going to go green, it'll likely be public transport. Yes, taxis included. That will have to lead the way. It's 5 a.m. at the Golden Arrow bus depot near the airport in Cape Town. Every weekday, more than 200,000 people board these buses. All diesel powered, burning 25 million liters of fuel a year. But this morning, these commuters are boarding an electric bus as part of an investigation into how to shift this company to cheaper, cleaner electric power. This is one of only two electric buses operating on South African roads. And its journey here in the Cape over the last year has been so successful that it heralds a new era for the Golden Arrow Bus Company as it signals a move away from dirty diesel. Gideon Nietling is the engineer driving the company's electric future. Clearly, the test results have been really positive. We found that, that the buses are really energy efficient, they're reliable, they meet all the safety requirements that we set, and the passengers and the drivers are really positive about the results. So where in that journey are you eventually saving money? The bulk of the savings will come from energy. If you look at diesel, we, uh, we estimate that we're probably going to see a 70% reduction in our energy costs. In other parts of the world, people are being sponsored to go green. That's not the case in South Africa. So we have to make sure that it's commercial solution first with serious fringe benefits of carbon reduction and going green. The two buses are charged in-house. If the electric fleet grows, so will the demand for power at peak times. But Gideon has a plan, solar panels on the roofs of the bus depots. They want to expand to cover 22 hectares. Golden Arrow will still rely on ESCOM to start with, but it's a big step towards cleaner power. If we look at this graph, then where you see red, we are using the electricity that we're buying from the city of Cape Town. Where you see blue, it's where we're using our own generated electricity. So that's all renewables. And where you see green, it's where we actually export electricity to the city of Cape Town. We're putting electricity back into the grid. The Golden Arrow bus service is a big hitter in Cape Town's transport industry with its massive fleet and 3,000 staff. It has the muscle to tackle the energy transition head on. But a short distance away in Stellenbosch is a much smaller startup company with only 25 employees, relying on innovative engineering to move into the market. This is a Mellow Van, a nippy three wheel electric delivery van with a big story behind it, already on roads around South Africa. Firstly, this is the electric motor. It's a brand new fifth generation electric motor. Very light, very powerful. It climbs like a mountain goat. And obviously, it's super dependable. It basically never breaks. Founder Neil Dupria tells us the charger plugs into a normal 220-volt wall socket. It can travel 120 kilometers on a single charge. The Melovan is a testament to local innovation. Initially, we were faced with trying to build something that we couldn't find any components for on, on the open market. So we had to design quite a few of the, the components, including the battery management system, the charging system, um, and from there on, we kind of evolved. Neil's original plan was to build a small electric two-person passenger cab, but delivery vans have proved more profitable. Which begs the question, how easy will it be for the taxi industry to participate in the pending electric transport revolution? The minibus taxi industry shoulders by far the biggest transport burden in the country, with about 350,000 vehicles on the road. And as the world shifts to electric vehicles, a consortium of engineers and academics are trying to figure out how to electrify this unique and at times unpredictable sector. 
Professor Tinnis Boysen from the University of Stellenbosch is part of a team working on this puzzle. Globally, in the rest of the world, all the vehicles are transforming to electric vehicles. The owners like you are going to have to start thinking about where do we get the vehicles and think about how do these vehicles work, how do you fill them up, where do you charge them, how long does it take to charge. The researchers are importing an electric taxi to conduct experiments. Electric vehicles are viable for the public sector, but it's very important how we do it and when we do it. There are many constraints that we need to take into account. If we just bring in electric vehicles right now, it's going to be devastating for our grid. Our electrical grid, with ESCOM in the state that it is, can't even supply our electricity needs as it is. So with every instance of an electric vehicle being added to it, charging from it, we're increasing this load and putting extra burden on the grid. Students are already involved in mass surveys of the daily routes and rhythms of local taxi associations, feeding data into a complex study. So, so this is what it's called a heat map. So the more often they are in a space, the more uh, dark red the color is. Are those like ranks? Are those CBDs? That's everywhere the taxi went. What we've done is we've taken students, put them in taxis and driven all around Stellenbosch and measured per second what the mobility patterns of these vehicles look like so that we can extract using pure physics, how much energy needs to come from the battery in order to do so. It's early days in the consultation with taxi owners, but already here in Kayamandi, outside Stellenbosch, there are more questions than answers. Probably the battery is going to be the much expensive because it's going to use the battery. It's our what is going to be on the battery, how much is going to be. And then other question I, I, I thought that I was supposed to ask him, mm. um, which how many did you make of those? Because we usually having a Toyotas and Nissans, and which one is that for the better? Which oh, makes that? Okay. The make and origin of electric taxis is a hot topic. South Africa slaps high tariffs on imported electric vehicles, making them expensive to buy despite being cheaper to run. The taxi owners, the business people, they, they know how to run a business and they care about money, making money. I think as soon as the penny drops that there's a business opportunity here, then they will be vested. They will care enough to, to transition much quicker. For me, the big stumbling block at the moment is the manufacturing. We need to manufacture electric vehicles locally and specifically taxis. Melovans has shown how local engineers have got the manufacture of electric vehicles right, with designs fit for purpose extending to vehicle tracking. And we can even look down into the battery on a cell level, look at the temperature, the voltage, and that really is important to really guarantee a really long life for the vehicle. Back at Golden Arrow, there are scores of technicians who know their way around an internal combustion engine with their eyes closed. The shift to electric will change their world as much as the bus and taxi owners, drivers and commuters on the street. There's no building of electric buses in South Africa at the moment, so importing is probably the easiest way to go. We think that that's the wrong way to go, that we need to manufacture them in South Africa, that we can protect the local market and that we can create the jobs that required. Thank you for watching our stories here online and please subscribe below to become part of our YouTube community and be notified when we upload our latest content.